Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey Nockreiner, your host, and this is the episode for the week starting June 18th, 2012. This week I have three security stories for you and one quick security related tool tip. Let me start with stories this week of attackers exploiting two Microsoft vulnerabilities in the wild. Last week I told you about Microsoft's big patch day, where they released seven security bulletins fixing a number of problems in their product, and also a security advisory that had a workaround and fix it for a previously unknown zero-day vulnerability that affects their XML core services. Well, early this week, researchers warned that attackers were not only continuing to heavily attack the XML core services vulnerability, but researchers also warned that attackers were also exploiting one of the vulnerabilities they fixed with their IE cumulative patch, the MS-12-0038 update. Starting with the XML core service vulnerability, researchers found attackers had actually booby-trapped many legitimate European sites, uh, specifically an uh, aeronautic parts manufacturer and some medical company site with this XML core services flaw. So if you visited those sites, you'd be a victim of a drive-by download. Some people suspect it was actually part of a state-sponsored cyber attack uh, for cyber espionage. On top of that, semantic researchers released information about attackers leveraging one of the IE cumulative patch vulnerabilities, specifically the same ID property remote code execution vulnerability. Again, if they could get special code on a particular web page and you visit that web page, they could leverage this vulnerability to forcefully install malware on your computer. Finally, making matters a little bit worse, Metasploit, which is a very popular exploit framework, included uh, exploit code for both of these vulnerabilities in their freely available download tool. So now anyone that knows how to use Metasploit, which is a pretty simple tool, can exploit either of these vulnerabilities. In fact, to do something different this episode, I want to quickly demonstrate a drive-by download attack leveraging the XML core service vulnerability. Okay, I want to quickly show you how Metasploit's actually built in the zero-day XML core services exploit. I'm using a popular Linux penetration testing distribution called Backtrack. It basically builds in all the popular exploit and penetration testing tools in a very easy-to-use distribution, including the Metasploit framework, which I'm launching here. So now that Metasploit's uh, loaded, I'm going to go ahead and resize this window so we have a bit more screen real estate. And now I just need to load my exploit, this uh, uh, MSXML exploit. So to do that in Metasploit, you type use exploit. This is a Windows exploit. It's specifically a browser-based exploit. And this particular one is called MSXML get definition code execution. So I'm going to go ahead and load that. Uh, if I type show options, I can actually see the options of this exploit. But you also need to set a payload. The payload is actually what your exploit is going to do on the computer when you attack it. Uh, you can make it download and execute code like a drive-by download. You can make it launch a shell. Uh, you can make it add users, uh, delete stuff, really whatever you want. But for this simple attack, I'm just going to use a very simple Windows execute payload. This just automatically will execute any program that's on the victim computer. You can do much more scary things than this, but I just want to show you a quick demonstration. Now that I've set the payload, I actually need to set some options for the attack. The first options I'm going to do uh, is set the server host. This is the actual IP uh, of the attacking computer. So you need to set this to the attacking computer IP, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. The next thing you need to do is set the server port, the port you want your malicious uh, web server to run on. This particular XML core service flaw is exploited through malicious websites. So by default, Metasploit uses port 8080, but I'm going to go ahead and use port 80, the typical web port. Uh, you also need to set a URI path. Uh, this is the, the, the directory or path on your website, your evil website that has the vulnerability. 
Metasploit tends to randomize this. I'm in this case going to put it in the root of this particular evil website, but you can really put it anywhere you want. Uh, the next thing you need to do is you need to set your payload options. In this case, my payload was to execute a command on the Windows computer. In this case, I'm going to do a very simple command, calc.exe. Every Windows uh, computer has a calculator. So in this case, if the exploit works on my victim computer, you're going to see a launch calculator. So now that my exploit's all ready to go, all I need to do in uh, Metasploit is type exploit and POW, uh, my attacker machine, or this penetration testing machine, is now an evil uh, website serving up this XML core services flaw. If I type jobs, I can actually see uh, my evil exploit running. So now to show you how, how this works, I'm going to go ahead and switch over real quick to a Windows computer. I'm going to pop open Internet Explorer. And obviously for this type of web-based exploit or drive-by download, an attacker needs to find some way to entice a victim to his evil website. But in this case, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to go to the actual IP address of the penetration testing computer from this victim computer. And you're going to see it load uh, the evil code. There's no site there, just Metasploit's evil code. And if all goes well, the calculator should pop up. And there you go. You see the XML core service flaw worked. It basically crashed Internet Explorer, but as the memory corruption did so, it also executed calculator. And while this doesn't seem scary, remember that the payload I could have chose could have been for this computer to download silently and install something in the background, including any sort of malware. I could have silently installed VNC on this computer uh, as a DLL in memory so that I can gain full remote control of it. I could have had a, a full remote control shell and so on and so forth. So this is a benign demo, but it shows you how easy it is for an attacker to quickly exploit this flaw using Metasploit. If I go back to the attacker computer, you can actually see it was launching that particular attack. So that's just a quick few minutes demo. Uh, so that's just a quick few minute demo. You can see how simple it is for pretty much anyone now to freely download Metasploit and exploit this particular attack. And just so you know, the other Internet Explorer vulnerability I mentioned before is also available in Metasploit. If I type use exploit uh, Windows browser MS12 underscore 037 same ID, you can see they also have that same ID vulnerability that attackers are also exploiting in the wild. So as you just saw, it's trivial for just about any script kitty to leverage Metasploit to exploit either of these vulnerabilities quite easily. Uh, the XML core service vulnerability is technically unpatched. Microsoft did release the fix it, which should prevent this vulnerability, but they still have to release the patch. In any case, if you didn't go and uh, install Microsoft's cumulative Internet Explorer patch and their fix it for the XML core service vulnerability last week, I urge you to definitely do so immediately. The second story this week is a piece of malware that seems to target a very, very specific industry. A AV company, ESET, discovered a piece of malware they're calling ACAD Medray.A. And this piece of malware seems to target companies that use AutoCAD. Specifically, the malware was found on various sites located in Peru that distribute AutoCAD files. If you do download one of these booby trap files, the malware will infect AutoCAD 14 through 19.2, and it tries to find all your AutoCAD files. Now, these are files manufacturers uh, use to distribute uh, schematics and diagrams for engineering purposes. Uh, basically, if the malware is on your computer, it tries to find all your AutoCAD files, and it emails them to an address that seems to be located in a Chinese ISP. So this malware seems to be geared towards cyber espionage. It seems to be looking for intellectual property uh, that has to do with manufacturing and engineering. But in any case, it's very interesting to see how these malware authors are specifically targeting their attacks to steal intellectual property. Now the good news is AV companies have discovered this threat and do have signatures for it. Uh, so make sure to use AV on all your computers and on your gateway devices and make sure to keep that AV up to date. 
I'll finish the week with a quick Cisco update. During the week, Cisco released three security advisories fixing vulnerabilities in a number of their products. Uh, these products included their ASA 5500 series firewall devices and catalyst switches, uh, their AnyConnect client, which is their mobile VPN client, and also their application control engine, or Cisco ACE. The worst vulnerability was probably a remote code execution vulnerability in Cisco's AnyConnect client. Basically, if an attacker knows you've installed the Java or ActiveX control for AnyConnect, and he can entice you to a malicious web page, he can leverage an input validation flaw in AnyConnect to forcefully download and install malware on your computer, so a very dangerous vulnerability. Uh, the other big one was probably the denial of service vulnerability that affected the ASA 5500 series security appliance and some Cisco Catalyst switches. Uh, this vulnerability has to do with how these devices parse IPv6. So basically, if an attacker can send specially crafted IPv6 uh, traffic to these devices, he can put it in a denial of service state, potentially keeping it down for as long as he wants. In any case, if you're a Cisco user, be sure to check out those three security advisories and update. Of course, if you're using WatchGuard's XTM appliances, you probably don't have the ASA 5500 series and don't have to worry about these vulnerabilities. So before I end this episode, I want to share a quick security tool tip. This week, Microsoft released version 3 of their Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit, also known as EMET. Now, not a lot of Windows users know about EMET yet. Uh, it's basically a special toolkit you can install on uh, Windows computers that contains special security mechanisms and technology that make it harder for bad guys to exploit software vulnerabilities in Windows. Uh, you might have heard of something called Data Execution Protection, or DEP. This is a special mechanism built into uh, many Windows operating systems that makes it harder for attackers to exploit any sort of memory corruption vulnerabilities. Basically, it tries to prevent attackers from uh, executing code from memory locations that really shouldn't contain code. EMED is essentially more of these types of security mechanisms. Again, these are mechanisms that don't prevent software from having vulnerabilities, but kind of make it harder for attackers to exploit any sort of memory-based vulnerabilities so that their payloads won't update and their exploit ultimately won't work. So if you're concerned about any Windows software vulnerabilities, you should definitely give the EMET toolkit a try. Uh, the version 3 point update, one of the things it does is makes it a lot easier to push this toolkit via an enterprise and group policy. So I recommend you download and check out EMET yourself on your own computer. And if you like it, feel free to deploy it throughout your network as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found the information useful. And remember, if you haven't applied those Microsoft and Cisco patches, be sure to do so. As usual, if you'd like more regular security stories, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com, and also check me out on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Thanks for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.